On the 24th of December 1989, a group of armed fighters crossed into Liberia at the border between Ivory Coast and Liberia. Their mission was to overthrow the Liberian government, led by Samuel Do. These fighters were led by a man called Charles Taylor, founder of the armed group known as the National Patriotic Front of Liberia, NPFL, and the main character of our story today. Before this invasion by Charles Taylor, Samuel Kayondo, a former Liberian soldier, had been ruling Liberia for over nine years after he carried out a bloody coup that took the life of President Talbot on the 12th of April 1980. A few years before Charles Taylor led a group of armed fighters into Liberia, he used to be the Director General of the General Services Agency under Samuel Do's government. Taylor supported the 1980 military coup led by Samuel Do, and this earned him a place in Do's government. As the Director General of the General Services Agency, Taylor was in charge of the purchase of weapons, equipment, and any required items for the Liberian government. This means he was always in contact with millions of dollars. Although Charles Taylor was earning fairly at his position, his greed soon got hold of him. Three years after his appointment, Taylor in May 1983 was accused of stealing about $1 million by Samuel Doe's government. He was immediately fired. Everyone knew Samuel Doe was not only going to fire Taylor, he was also going to make sure he lost his life. And Taylor was aware of this possibility, so he fled Liberia shortly after he was fired. Taylor fled to the United States where he hid until the U.S. Police Department was informed by those governments of Taylor's crime. Taylor was later arrested and thrown in jail, waiting to be extradited to Liberia to face his judgment. Mysteriously, Taylor escaped from where he was locked up, and that was the last time Samuel Doe ever knew about his whereabouts, not until the invasion of Liberia on the eve of Christmas in 1989. After Charles Taylor crossed into Liberia with his fighters, the first Liberian civil war began. The armed forces of Liberia tried to repel Charles Taylor's assault, but they were faced with a deadly resistance. Charles Taylor's armed group was not the only invaders in 1989. Another group which had split from Taylor's group, known as the Independent National Patriotic Front of Liberia, INPFL led by a former soldier under Samuel Do's government, Prince Yomi Johnson, also launched an attack on Samuel Do's government on the same day. So, the armed forces of Liberia were fighting two battles at the same time. They were fighting the NPFL and INPFL. Interestingly, both the INPFL and NPFL were not allies. They would still shoot at one another if their paths crossed, but they had the same objective, to seize government from Samuel Do. Although after many months of heavy fighting, Charles Taylor captured a lot of cities in Liberia, including some part of the capital city, Monrovia. He was not able to get near the executive mansion where Samuel Do was still exercising his authority, despite knowing he was losing the battle. Just like Charles Taylor, Yomi Johnson, the leader of the INPFL and once a member of the NPFL, had also captured a lot of cities in Liberia, including some parts of Monrovia. But the executive mansion, which was heavily protected by Liberian soldiers who had retreated from the cities captured by Taylor's and Johnson's armed groups, remained impenetrable by the two groups. The deadly war led other West African countries to set up a joint military group called ECOMOG to end the war in Liberia. Although ECOMOG had better weapons and well-trained soldiers, it could not end the war in Liberia. On the morning of 9th of September 1980, Samuel Do made a mistake that would cost him his life. He decided to leave the executive mansion to visit ECOMOG's office in Monrovia. Unfortunately for Samuel Do, Yomi Johnson, the leader of INPFL, heard about his movement and ambushed him at the ECOMOG's office. Yomi Johnson captured Samuel Do 
and tortured him on live television. Samuel Doe was eventually killed by Johnson's men on the same day and his body paraded in public. It was a sad end for a man who was once called Mr. President. Despite the death of Samuel Doe and the consequent disintegration of the armed forces of Liberia, war still raged in the cities of Liberia. As Charles Taylor and Yomi Johnson continued fighting against one another to claim the leadership of the country, West African leaders tried everything they could to reduce the fighting and after several attempts to reach a peace deal, Yomi Johnson and Charles Taylor stopped the fighting. The peace deal allowed Liberia to conduct an election on the 19th of July 1997, an election Charles Taylor took part in. Taylor won the election with 75% of the votes and was made the president of Liberia in 1997. Shortly after Taylor was made the president of Liberia, he restructured the armed forces of Liberia and filled it up with his former fighters. Yomi Johnson fled to Nigeria after Taylor was elected. He feared Taylor might prosecute him for war crimes. Let us go back to 1991, a year after President Samuel Doe was killed by Yomi Johnson and six years before Charles Taylor became the president of Liberia. Shortly after Samuel Doe's death, some fighters of Charles Taylor, who were from Sierra Leone, believed that they could also seize power from the Sierra Leone government, which was led by President Joseph Saidu Momo. So they formed an armed group called the Revolutionary United Front, RUF, and launched an attack on Sierra Leone on the 31st of March, 1991. The RUF was led by a man called Fode Sanko. This group got massive support from Charles Taylor. Taylor was supplying these rebels with weapons. At first, his support was not transactional. But after the RUF was able to see some part of Sierra Leone with huge deposit of diamonds, these rebels started paying Charles Taylor with diamonds in exchange for even heavier and more sophisticated weapons. This is where the term blood diamond was coined from and a movie was even made from this. The war in Sierra Leone escalated for many years and after Charles Taylor was elected as the president of Liberia, he never stopped supplying the rebels with weapons in exchange for diamond. Charles Taylor would sell these diamonds to buyers from across the world to enrich himself and to buy more weapons. Charles Taylor also supported rebels in Guinea and Ivory Coast and his support gave power to these rebels to destabilize their countries and cause the death of thousands of people. Back in Liberia, Charles Taylor was performing below expectations. Many armed rebels started rising against him and Liberia was back to a troubled times. The violent escalation in West Africa made ECOMOG, led by Nigeria, to intervene in Sierra Leone. The United Nations also placed a ban on diamond sales from Liberia. This meant Charles Taylor would not be able to sell his diamonds to buyers any longer. By 1999, Charles Taylor's government was facing attacks from many rebel groups, some of whom were former loyalists of late Samuel Doe. The rebels pushed into Monrovia and their only request was that Taylor should step down. After so many back and forth negotiations, fightings and violence, Charles Taylor agreed to step down and on the 11th of August 2003, he stepped down and fled to Nigeria, where he was granted asylum by President Olusegun Obasanjo. Taylor was flown to Calabar, Nigeria, where he was initially kept under house arrest at a luxurious villa. However, he was later moved to a more secluded location because of his safety. He remained at this location until 2006. After Charles Taylor's resignation on August 11, 2003, Moses Blau took over as the interim president of Liberia. However, his tenure was short-lived 
and he handed over power to the transitional government led by Jude Brandt on the 14th of October 2003. Jude Brandt served as the chairman of the transitional government of Liberia from 2003 to 2006, overseeing the country's transition to democratic rule. In 2005, Liberia held democratic elections and Elim Johnson Salif was elected as the president of Liberia, becoming the first elected female head of state in Africa. She assumed her office on January 16, 2006 and served two terms. Although life in Liberia was gradually returning to normal after Taylor's resignation, the opposite was the case for Taylor's life. Just a few months before he stepped down as the president of Liberia, the Special Court for Sierra Leone had issued an arrest warrant for Charles Taylor on the 7th of March 2003 after investigation showed Taylor's support for the RUF was responsible for the escalation of the war in Sierra Leone. You see, the RUF initially portrayed itself as a rebel group fighting for the freedom of the people of Sierra Leone. But this was far from the truth. This group was fighting the Sierra Leone government for selfish reasons. After these rebels were able to capture some part of Sierra Leone with huge deposits of diamond, they became notorious towards the people of Sierra Leone. They would cut off the ears, limbs, lips, and other body parts of citizens who failed to join them nor support their devilish campaign. The court believed that Charles Taylor's influence contributed majorly to the atrocities of these rebels in Sierra Leone. So, the arrest warrant was issued while Taylor was still president of Liberia. Taylor stepping down did not stop the court from going after him. So, in March 2006, Nigeria came under heavy pressure from the international community asking for the extradition of Charles Taylor to face justice. Nigeria finally agreed to extradite Taylor, but Taylor tried to escape after getting news of his possible extradition. The Nigerian government was able to arrest him before his escape and it facilitated his immediate extradition to Monrovia, from where he was later flown to Sierra Leone. On the 16th of June 2006, the United Nations Security Council approved the motion for Taylor to be tried in the Netherlands after they suspected that his detention in Sierra Leone could cause violence in the region. On the 20th of June 2006, Taylor was transferred to the Netherlands to continue his trial. On the 26th of April 2012, after six years of trial, Charles Taylor was found guilty on all the charges against him. On the 30th of May 2012, Taylor was sentenced to 50 years in prison and is currently serving his time at His Majesty Prison Frankland in England. To fully understand this story, kindly click on the video thumbnail showing on your screen to know how it all started to go wrong in Liberia. If you have seen the story till this point, I appreciate you so much. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. See you on the next one.